Hey guys, welcome back to Copycat Friday, the weekly series in which we try to recreate visual effects from famous movies and music videos. And today is no different as we're taking a look at not one, not two, but three K-pop music visual effects. The first one is gonna be this awesome eye zoom transition from Taemin. We're gonna take a look at the glitch transition from Espa. And last but not least, the eye glow trail effect from Super M. And I'm Super E, you know? Excited? So let's get started! <laughs> nee, ik, ik voel het niet. Ik voel het niet. Like Jordi said in the beginning of the video, we are going to do three K-pop effects. We already have a basic idea on how we are going to do the effects, but we're still going to test some minor things. And now we are going to build a set. For the set we kept it pretty basic. We just hung up some lights in the background to create an interesting pattern and added two RGB lights to have some color in the frame. In total we have three effects. The first one is the eye zoom. To make it ourselves easy we shot this on a tripod with Jordi looking straight into the lens. Following with this we also made a close up of Jordi's eye, preferably with a macro lens if you have that. And this we do so when you zoom in on the eyeball it won't be too blurry. And then for the shot following the eye zoom we just shot a pretty basic shot. The second effect is the one with the glowing eyes and this you can shoot however you want. There's only one thing you need to pay attention to and that is to make sure your talent always makes big movements with his head and that the eyes are always visible. And then the final effect will be the glitch transition. Again, this is going to be pretty easy and we'll shoot this on a tripod. We let Jordi do a little dance in front of the camera. And at a certain moment we stop. Jordi changed outfits and then continued doing the same dance move. Basically what you want to achieve here is the perfect match cut, where you cut from one shot to another with the movements matching. And when all of that is done... Uh, Timo, edit me on a rave. Now, big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's episode. And as you just saw, it's not only useful for enhancing your visual effects, but also to make your edits a whole lot more interesting and dynamic. Now, Timo right here makes the videos that you guys watch, and he makes them more dynamic by working with Adobe After Effects or Premiere Pro templates, such as transitions, there are overlay effects, and so much more. And there are also a lot of bells and whistles, like green screen clips, such as this popping effect or an explosion or something. It's really cool. It makes the edit a whole lot more fun, and it keeps the viewer interested for a longer period. Now, Storyblocks is an ever-growing library with over a million video assets, so there's always something to be found on the platform. High-quality 4K stock clips, slideshows, logo reveals, you name it, they have it. And the most incredible thing about Storyblocks is that there's only one single price per year, which allows you to download unlimited video assets without additional fees. So go check it out yourself. You can do so by clicking the first link in the description down below. And now let's go back to the editing. Is this my outfit? I like this t-shirt a lot. Let's go for this one. Look at my muscles. You know what to do with Timo. <laughs> I do everything, dancing, acting, you call me. I'm the best in the business. Do we have all the shots that we need? Check. Is Jordi a bad dancer? Also check. Are we going to pronounce some K-pop names wrong? Probably yes, and forgive us for that. But now it's time to start creating our first effect, the eye zoom effect from Tamman's music video Advice. And like Lorenzo explained, we are going to need multiple shots for this. One normal shot of our dancer's head, then a close-up of their eye, and if possible, an extreme close-up of their eye. Like super close. Then let's place everything inside After Effects, starting with our normal shot of Jordi. The first thing we did was striking the motion of Jordi's head. 
Next, apply the tracking data to a null object, and voila, our tracking is done. Now we can place a close-up of the eye on top of Jordy. First step, right-click on it and freeze frame the eye clip. Now let's pre-comp that layer, and after that's done, we created a mask purely around the eye. Then scale it down and place it over the correct eye of Jordy. We parented the eye layer to the null object with all the tracking data, and now it follows along perfectly. Then, if you also have the super extreme eye close-up, you can do the exact same steps as before and parent it all together. As for the zoom, we created a new null object, which is going to hold our zooming data. First, place a new null right over the eye and with its anchor point dead center in the pupil. Next, parent the original clip and the tracking data null object to the zoom null. Then we chose a certain spot in our timeline and created a keyframe for the scale and the position. Went further in time and zoomed in a bunch, making the screen completely black. Then we selected the scale keyframes, right clicked on them and went to the keyframe assistant and chose exponential scale. This is going to smooth out the scaling in even steps, making the zoom much better. Of course, we don't really want a black screen, so we placed a clip of the new scene on top of everything and with a round mask that followed the pupil perfectly, we revealed the new shot. If needed, you can always speed up your zoom afterwards. Just pre-comp everything and speed ramp it. And voila, you have a cool eye zoom. Time for the next effect, which is going to be this cool eye glowing effect from Super M and their music video 100. Now for the footage I already explained what we need, so let's start with the effect. We again placed our clip in the timeline and the first thing we did was to track the motion of the right eye. Once done we could simply apply the tracking data to a null object and of course keep everything organized so we renamed it right eye. Then we did the exact same thing for the left eye, track the motion, apply it to a null object, rename it to left eye. And now let's do the glowing eye trails. With the ellipse tool and no layer selected, we created a small circle over the right eye of Jordi. On top in our menu, we could then give it a color that we want, and if you have a stroke enabled, disable that. Now of course, parent the circle with the right eye null object to make it follow along. Next, we added the echo effect to a circle shape layer, and for the settings, we increased the echo time to almost zero, and the number of echoes to around 1000. Then we decreased the decay a little bit, and changed the echo operator to screen which should give you this eye trail. Now obviously we have to do the exact same thing for the left eye and then the final step is adding some glow to the trail. But there you could have some difficulties. If you add the glow it could become too much for After Effects to handle. So a solution you could do is to simply remove the glow, render out your trail on the alpha channel and import it again. Then add the glow again and now you have a glowing eye trail. Now the last effect which is going to be this glitch transition effect from Aspa's music video Next Level. First we place an empty shot in our timeline and on top of that our dancer. Then we picked a spot where we wanted our glitch to happen. Here we made a cut. Then let's say that we want our glitch to last for 10 frames or so. So after 5 frames we again made a cut and placed our second shot of the dancer after that cut. Of course, let the second shot start where the dancer is in the same position as the first clip. Then we again went 5 frames further in time and made a cut there to end the glitch. Our next step was rotoscoping out the dancers in both clips and after that was done, we took our two clips and pre-composed them. Next we created a solid layer with the same length as our pre-comp. On that solid layer we are going to add a fractal noise effect. For the settings of this effect you actually can do whatever you want. You have complete creative freedom. But the main settings that really needs to be changed is the fractal type set this to small bumps and adjust the noise type to block. Then for all the rest you can choose whatever you want. One last thing, of course animate the evolution for some motion in the blocks. Next we also added the luma key effect to the solid and keyed out the darker parts, leaving us with a fewer white blocks. Now that you have these beautiful blocks, let's use this as a track mat. Set the track mat option of the precom to alpha inverted mat, cutting everything away inside the blocks. For the next step we selected the solid layer and the precom layer and duplicated them. The track matte option of the duplicated precom layer we changed to alpha matte and also added a displacement map to the layer. Here we can then set the displacement map layer to the duplicate solid layer and of course to effects and masks. We also set the horizontal displacement to luminance and increased its value. Now let's again select the last two layers and duplicate them. On the duplicate solid layer we adjusted the fractal noise a little for some variation and after that we pre-composed both clips together. Now for the last step we are going to create a new solid 
solid layer and add a CC ball action to the solid. We then decrease the grid spacing and ball size. And last but not least, we set the drag mat option of the pre-comp to Luma inverted mat. And that's it. Oh yeah, if you want, you can always add an extra RGB split effect to really make it glitch. But again, that's something personal. And that was it guys! If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to press the thumbs up button to also help YouTube algorithm and spread the creativity across the internet. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for the support, and as always, stay creative!